Hey, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Gear. Today we're looking at this little unit from X Vive, which is the U4 wireless headphone transmitter. This is typically used with an in-ear monitoring system and I'm pretty excited to have received this unit. I've been waiting for it to arrive the last couple of days and I wanted to go over it with you guys because I feel that the unit does have a host of applications that you can use it for and it's not just for people that want to use it with in-ear monitors on stage. You can actually use it for a whole lot more. I'm using this system uh, with my Hotone Ampero, which is a multi-effects unit for those of you who don't know. And I'm able to plug the unit into the back of the effects unit and play with my headphones, my monitors, or my uh, you know regular ear pods, earbuds, and uh, have the sound come through for me so I'm not tied down with the usual leads from the guitar um, or the headphones to the unit. So it gives me a little bit more freedom, a little bit more flexibility, and I wanted something that wasn't cheaply made so that it would withstand the test of time. I don't like it when these things fall apart. They're not super expensive, but they can be if they fall apart on you after a month's use. So I wanted something that seemed to be well built. So I wanted to check this out with you today and go over it with you in, a, in, in more detail just to be able to show you what's in the box and what you can expect to receive. Overall, I was impressed with the way the unit performed. I didn't expect it to be as well built as it was. There is a couple of gotchas that I'm going to share with you with the, on this video so that you will know about it if you're considering using these systems uh, for yourself. Uh, there are a couple of things that they do mention right on the box. There's the uh, latency, there's the range, and uh, there's the battery life. These are three pretty important aspects of any system. Um, and I feel that this one performs just as good as some more expensive units that are out there. Is it a professional uh, system? It can be. I mean, it all depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for, you know, less interference and whatnot, there may be other systems out there that perform better. But for my applications, um, it works really, really well. So let's look at what's in the box. We'll do a really quick unboxing and rundown so you can see what you get in the system uh, with, with all of the packaging and with all of the candy that comes in the box. And then later on, I'll give you my summary and overall opinion of the system. So let's get started with that. Uh, the reason why I was looking at this unit is because I do want ha to have the ability to use in-ear monitors when I'm playing live with a band um, and at the same time to have a unit that would allow me some additional flexibility uh, whenever I actually want to have something transmitted and received to my headphones. So this could be used equally well at home um, when you're playing uh, with, let's say you're using a multi-effects unit like I normally do, uh, you can easily plug this into the outputs of your uh, unit and actually transmit the signal wirelessly to your headphones, which allows you to move about a bit and be a little bit less tied down by the length of the cables to your headphones uh, and just gives you a little bit more freedom. So I thought that would be uh, an interesting thing to experiment with. Now, I haven't used this unit before. I haven't looked at it before. So we're going to open up the box and look at it together and see how well it, it looks like it's built and what the options are in it. I do know, however, a couple of things right off the bat. They do claim to give you a range of 90 feet. Uh, now that is always with a grain of salt because when they usually give you the specs, uh, any company will give you the specs uh, rated by line of sight transmission, meaning there is no physical obstruction between you and the receiver. So for example, if you're playing at home uh, and you're in the same room, there should not be any interference. But then of course, if you're 
trying to transmit two or three rooms away, you might have some issues. On stage, 90 feet is plenty of space, but you know, there's there could be interference with equipment, there could be interference with other band members, especially if you have a chunky bass player or something like that. Uh, in my case, that is not uh, what, what the situation is, so I should be fine. Uh, they also claim that the latency, and there always is a little bit of latency with these products. Uh, you don't get you know, something sent and received immediately. There's always gonna be a little bit of a delay. In this case, they claim that the latency is less than five milliseconds. And if that's true, that is nothing to worry about because when you're standing about three or four feet away from someone and you're speaking, that is approximately you know, five milliseconds of delay time. Um, so it shouldn't be anything uh, that will throw you off. The charge time on this unit is also five hours, meaning that the built-in battery needs to be charged fully to be, to be able to offer you five hours of playtime. Uh, of course, over time, batteries get weak and you know that time will drop, but when the unit is brand new, you should have no problem getting five hours of use on a full charge. And unless you're, you know, Bruce Springsteen or something like that, and you're doing marathon concerts, you should be fine. So without further ado, let's open up this bad boy and see what we get inside the box. Okay, so the first thing that you will see when you open the box is the packaging that holds the uh, receiver and transmitter units. Um, now the packaging is quite nice. Looks like it's safely packaged so that you won't get something damaged when it arrives at your door. So let's look at the uh, receiver before we start talking about the transmitter. I'll pull it out of the packaging here so we can have a better look at it. We can see that the unit is actually very small, surprisingly small even. I expected it to be a little bit larger than it is. It's not large, but it is a little bit thick. Uh, it's about the size of, what can I say? I don't know what I can compare this to, but it's you know probably about an inch or so, maybe a little bit more than an inch thick, um, and maybe two inches wide, uh, but it's, you know, it's got some, some heft to it. It doesn't feel cheap. The unit looks like it's made of metal. I can see that it's screwed together on the sides. You can see that there are two security screws uh, on the side and on the opposite side, you have the same thing. The front of it has a nice logo uh, and we have the typical controls that you expect to see on this unit. So we have a volume knob here and we have what looks to be a knob, but it's actually not a knob. It's, it's a, a, a switch in disguise, if we want to call it that. Uh, on the top of the unit, we have the on off button here. And then we have the input for the headphones. So I turned it on. You can see the light goes on. And here we have the channel selector. So in the middle of this round knob we have a little button and when we press the button we can select the channels pretty typical for a transmit transmitter like this um, then in the center of the unit here between the two knobs we have a couple of lights one indicates the connectivity and the other the battery life so i'm not surprised they're not on probably because the receiver uh, and the transmitter are not paired yet so i'll do that in a second to show you what that will look like. On the side here, we have an input. It's a USB input, and that is typically what we would use to charge the unit. Um, the one thing that I'm gonna mention right off the bat is that with units like this, you have to be aware that there are no easy ways of replacing the batteries. The batteries are built into the unit, which means that they have a lifespan and eventually they will die. Normally, you can get quite a quite a few charges and discharges, actually, you know, hundreds or even thousands, depending on how well you take care of the unit, so that it should last a very, very long time. But you have to be aware that once the battery does die within the unit, it probably will be difficult to find a replacement battery, and you will probably have to do some handiwork to be able to open up the unit and replace the battery. So in certain, uh, in certain cases, I like the ability of having the batteries you know, rechargeable batteries that I can put into the unit. Uh, 
but then it does make the unit uh, slightly bulkier. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Uh, one thing that I like about this unit is the fact that the belt clip is very well made, solidly made. You can see it's held in place by a, a big screw and the uh, belt clip is very, very rigid. It's not floppy or flimsy. So if you put the unit onto your belt uh, or clip it onto your strap, if you're a guitarist or a bass player, it should not fall down and fall off and break. So. Uh, that is reassuring. Uh, this is the transmitter. So the transmitter obviously transmit the signal to the receiver and the receiver basically allows you to hear what is being transmitted. Pretty simple. Uh, on the front of the unit we have a couple of switches. The one on the left is an aux or a line selector. The one on the right is a power or mute switch and in the middle here we do have a selector for the channels. So if we turn the unit on we can see a series of lights here. Uh, so we have a clear indication of whether, whether or not the unit is on and what channel it is paired to. Now in this particular case, here I'll put this up here for you so you can see both at the same time since I'm doing this single-handed. Um, so if the receiver is now paired to channel 5 and I put this to tr channel 5 as well, you'll see now that the pairing light is on indicating that it is actually able to send and receive a signal for you. Now this unit is not small. You can see it's quite a bit larger than the receiver. It's also hefty, seems pretty solidly built, but it's half metal, half plastic. So the top half here is metal, the bottom half here is plastic. Um, it doesn't seem to feel as solid as this part of it does, but you know, I don't expect to have issues with it unless of course you drop it a bunch of times, in which case it could probably break apart. We have the charging port here for the USB on the side of it. And I think the protrusion along the bottom here is probably an extension of the internal antenna so that you're able to get the range that they claim. So the connector here is a, a typical uh, three pronged uh, female uh, input. Uh, and if you use a mixer, they're quite common um, connectors to see on the back of your mixer. Now the problem is if you don't have that type of an input and you want to go mono, then you would need a, a, an adapter. And thankfully, they included one with the kit. So it's a nice metal adapter that will basically connect to a three-pronged uh, female into a mono uh, connection here. Now, here's one of the issues that I discovered quickly with this unit. Once you plug in the adapter to this thing, it becomes huge. Um, so, you know, being able to put this in tight spots uh, could become a challenge. If you have a mixer, for example, and it's pushed up against a console or is against a wall somewhere and you want to put it into the uh, inputs in the, in the back of it, you're going to need a lot of room. Uh, this also, you know, being that it uh, protrudes like this, it could easily snag on something. Somebody could, uh, you know, walk by, snag onto it and just rip it, you know, in half. So I, I would have preferred if they would maybe have given you the, um, the connector as a flexible cable, maybe something a little bit more uh, discreet, something shorter would probably have been better. Uh, the other thing is you don't always have the luxury of plugging in the unit uh, face up. So as a test, I took this unit and I plugged it into my Ampero multi-effects unit uh, just to see if I was able to transmit a signal while I was playing and listen to it with my headphones, which it, it did. It worked very well. But unfortunately, the orientation of my connectors were upside down. So the unit actually faces this direction for me, which means that you know, the controls obviously uh, are going to be very difficult to see. Once again, if they were to would have used a flexible 
connector here. It could have been better because then you could turn it around or you can flip it over so that you can see it easier. So that's one of the drawbacks that I found with the unit. Now the unit also comes with a couple of other little things in, inside the, uh, the case. You do have a nice pouch to carry the unit and receiver. Uh, two gigs so that it doesn't get scratched or dinged. Uh, you don't want to ruin a brand new product. And it does also come with this handy Y charger that will allow you to charge both the receiver and the transmitter at the same time through a USB connection. This is quite handy because otherwise you would be using uh, two separate cables and it would take you know, quite a bit longer, which is not very practical. The sound quality is quite good. I don't have any issues with the sound quality at all. You don't lose any fidelity, at least not for the applications that I was using it for. So as far as fidelity goes, I wasn't able to discern any loss in fidelity for the applications that I was using it for. Now, if you're a hi-fi freak and you're, and you're using it with a very, very expensive sound system, uh, with very expensive headphones, you might notice a degradation in sound quality for that type of application, but typically it is not designed for that. It is really designed to be a down and dirty uh, receiver transmitter system for live applications. So in those scenarios, it performs quite well. As far as distance goes, the unit performs very well. I used it in and around the house. I plugged it into my guitar while I was playing it and I could walk around the house quite easily without having any interference well beyond what I would normally use for a system like this. So I feel that in normal applications, you won't have any issues with it at all. The, the ability of having the adjustable volume is quite handy. Uh, and obviously having uh, a bunch of channels available to you means that you can use the system with all of the members of your band uh, and each have your own channel so that you don't cause interference among yourselves. Now, if you have more than six members in your band, you might have an issue. I don't know how you would manage that, but uh, it's highly unlikely that everyone would be, be using the exact same system at the exact same time and you have more than six members in your band doing so. So in a regular four or five, five piece band, um, this unit would work very well. So overall, what do I think about the unit? I, I give it a thumbs up because it is solidly made. It works very well. I don't have any issues with it and it does provide the freedom that I'm looking for in a system like this so that I know I have the luxury of trying different types of applications. So overall guys, I'm pretty impressed with the system. It works very well. It, the sound quality is good. I wasn't able to get any interference in my applications here at home. I haven't tried it completely yet or extensively live, so I'm gonna report back on that when I do try it, but it does feel solidly built. Uh, I do wish that the transmitter with the adapter was a little bit shorter, as I mentioned, and maybe that's something that they'll reconsider uh, in the future. But overall, I think they're very well made devices and for the price that you're paying, you're getting a very good system. So check out the X-Vibe system for yourself. Uh, you can get the information on the uh, products and all the technical information that you might want on their website. I'll put the link in my descriptions below. But the U4 receiver and transmitter system is definitely something you should check out if you're looking for something that is budget friendly and that is well built. So check it out for yourself. In the meantime, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Addicted to Gear. I do appreciate the fact that you're watching my channel and you're sticking with me. Don't forget that I have other videos posted on my website, addictedtogear.com. If you haven't already checked out the channel uh, and the website, please do. In the meantime, stay tuned, keep rocking. There'll be more great videos coming your way. See you soon.